Everyone. It's so good to see each one gathered out this evening. We do make you all warmly welcome in our Saviour's precious name. And also to those that are joined with us online, we're thankful for you joining with us tonight and we trust that each and every one will know the blessing of the Lord as we meet together around his precious word. It is so good to see so many out tonight. You've pulled yourself away from the turkey sandwiches and the quality street. And it is also good to welcome again our brother John Weir. And it's hard to believe that this is John's fourth week with us. And we've been blessed by his ministry to us uh, in the past weeks. And we look forward to what John has to bring uh, to us tonight as well. So John, you're very welcome here again this evening. And also to uh, John's father, Michael. Good to see him here again this evening. Uh, Michael, you're very welcome here as well. Now, just as we begin our service tonight, we're going to now stand and sing hymn 166. I was sinking deep in sin, sinking to rise no more, overwhelmed by guilt within. Mercy I did implore. Then the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Christ my Saviour lifted me. Now safe am I. So after the introduction we'll stand to sing please. I was sinking deep in sin. Thank you. Now that was good singing. Now let us just come into the Lord's presence in a word of prayer and seek his blessing upon our gallery here this evening. Let us pray. Our gracious God and loving eternal Father in heaven, we're so thankful tonight, Lord, that we can draw aside and come into thy most holy presence. And Lord, we're thankful tonight that we have access into the very throne room of God. 
not because of who we are or anything that we have done or anything that we have achieved, but all because of what Christ has done on our behalf at the place called Calvary, and only on the merits of his shed blood. And Lord, as we come tonight, Lord, we thank you for our soul's salvation. And we're thankful, Heavenly Father, each one gathered here tonight has been lifted from the depths of the miry clay and set upon the rock that is Christ Jesus. And Lord, we're thankful tonight that we're saved not for time alone, but for the countless ages of eternity. And Heavenly Father, as we think, think about that tonight, Lord, we're mindful again of so many in our land tonight, Lord, and they're still on that broad road. And so, Lord, we do pray that once again thy Holy Spirit would move in mighty power in our land, that we would see a great revival, Lord, that we would see a spiritual awakening whenever men and, men and women and boys and girls would come and seek the Saviour and call upon him and be born again of the Spirit of God and have their names recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. O oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray, Lord, that men and women and boys and girls would realise the error of their ways in these days in which we live, and that they would come and seek the Saviour. Lord, we thank tonight, Lord, of our own fellowship here. We do pray for those that are unable to be with us tonight, those in the care homes, Lord, and those that are closed in in their own home tonight, and through frailty and ill health they cannot be with us. Lord, we just pray that they would know a very real sense of your presence with them. And Lord, that you would keep your hand upon them and bless them and just undertake, Lord, lift them again to a greater measure of health and strength. Heavenly Father, we do thank also tonight, Lord, of our young people. We just pray for them, Lord, as they would uh, just seek, Lord, to stand strong for you in these days in which we live. Lord, we do pray that you would put a hedge of protection around about each and every one of them, Lord. And Lord, in the, uh, next week, Lord, as they would uh, go back to school, Lord, and maybe back to university, we just pray, Lord, that you would help them, Lord, to take a stand for you. And Heavenly Father, their friends, their teachers, Lord, would see uh, that there's something different about them. And Heavenly Father, they would realise that it is the Lord Jesus in their life, and that they too... I uh, can have them as well if they would come and accept them as their own and personal saviour. Lord, for ourselves tonight, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, how we were able to meet here, Lord, without fear of attack or persecution. And Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for thy word tonight. And Lord, we're thankful we have it in our own language, that we can open it up tonight, Lord, and study it. And so, Heavenly Father, we just pray that we would know the help of God, the Holy Spirit, tonight. We pray, Lord, for our speaker tonight. We just thank you for John. We thank you, Lord, for saving him. And, Heavenly Father, as he goes about seeking to serve you, Lord, day and daily, and seeking to win our souls for a Saviour, we just pray, Lord, that he again would know that indwelling power of the Spirit of God. So, Lord, as John has the responsibility tonight to open up the, the Word of God, and, and we just pray, Lord, that he would know your help, Lord. So, Lord, just continue with us and bless and undertake, and we will return unto thee all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory, for as thou alone art worthy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Now then, just some announcements then. Uh, Saturday night is New Year's Eve, and remember we have our watch night service, and that uh, begins at 10.45 for a cup of tea. And then at 11.15, our program begins. So uh, do endeavour to join with us on Saturday evening uh, for our watch night service uh, here in the church building. Then this coming Sunday, uh, the 1st of January, we have our brother Craig Dennison coming to us. And he'll be here at 11.30 in the morning for the ministry of God's word and for the breaking of bread. And then also on Sunday evening for the, for the, the gospel service. And do remember that both services are preceded by a time of prayer in the room upstairs. And then also we have our prayer times each Sunday, 8.20 via Zoom, and also 9 a.m. here in the church building. Then a reminder that uh, next week sees the beginning of our week of prayer. That begins on Monday the 2nd, right through until Friday. And that begins each evening at 7.30. And each night one of our own brethren here will be bringing a short message from God's Word. Uh, so do endeavour to join with us in our week of prayer. Uh, there's plenty to pray about and much that needs the prayers of God's people at this time. So do endeavour to come along each night uh, and support that. Now I think that is all by way of announcement. Uh, and they're all made and on subject to the sovereign will of the Lord. So I'm going to hand over now to John, and John is going to bring us a message now from God's Word. Thank you, Jason. God bless. Thank you. Evening, everybody. Uh, lovely to be back with you again tonight. Thank you, Jason, for the warm words of welcome. And it's just a privilege uh, to be in God's house with the Lord's people to open up the Scriptures. If you have a Bible, let's turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians, please, in chapter 5. Uh, 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. And we're going to read from verse number 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading at verse number 12. Seeing this is the last um, Bible study prayer meeting of the year, I want to just speak tonight on being thankful as we reflect back on 2022, about why even as we pray tonight that we should be thankful. And I was reading this article recently. If you have food in the fridge, 
clothes on your back, a roof over your head and a place to sleep, you're richer than 75% of the world. If you have money in the bank, your wallet and some spare change, you're among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you woke up today with more health and illness, you're more blessed than a million people who will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the agony of imprisonment or torture, or the horrible pangs of starvation, you're more blessed than 500 million people who are alive and suffering. And this article said that if you can read this message, you're more blessed than a billion people in the world who cannot read it at all. And that's what I want to consider tonight. Why, as God's people, should we be thankful? So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, reading at verse 12. Paul here writes, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labour among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it brethren pray for us and greet all the brethren with a holy kiss I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you Amen. So we'll stop there and keep your Bibles open and may the Lord as always add a blessing to the reading and preaching of his word. Let's pray. Lord, we just pray now as we come around your word for these next few minutes that you'll just settle their hearts after another busy day. We do thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house tonight and we do thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, I just pray for a fresh cleansing. I pray for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. And pray, Lord, you'll bring all things to my remembrance this evening. Thank you for brothers and sisters who have taken the time to come out tonight to pray and to learn from your word. And I pray that you would bless them richly, even in their own souls. Lord, we love you and we worship you. We thank you for the day and hour you saved us and changed our lives. And even for the desire you put within our hearts to be here this evening. So we ask these things in your lovely name. Amen. Folks, I wonder by way of introduction tonight, what sort of year has 2022 been for you as you reflect back on this year. No doubt for some here it's been a wonderful year. No doubt for some it's been a difficult year. It's been a testing year. It's maybe been a challenging year. You see our lives are full of blessings, difficulties, ups and downs. Our lives can be full of surprises. And maybe for 2022 for some here maybe you were married this year. Maybe for some in the congregation you had children this year. Maybe you became a grandparent this year. Maybe you started a new job. Maybe there's individuals here and you were saved this year. Maybe you come back to the Lord. Maybe you've really grown and matured as a Christian. Maybe you've seen souls saved in your ministry. Maybe it's been a wonderful year in whatever work that you are involved in. Many of us need encouragements in, in our Christian lives, don't we? And no matter how long we're saved, it's great to have encouragements. And I'm sure some of us have been really encouraged even in our ministries. And it's just wonderful that when we do uh, get tokens of encouragement and we give the Lord the glory when we do get those encouragements. But maybe in contrast, maybe 2022 has been a tough year for some tonight in the congregation, in the fellowship here. Maybe you've battled much sickness this year. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've struggled in your faith. Maybe there's even been discouragement in the ministry that you're involved in. These battles are real and Trials can be difficult, and uh, some years can be better than others. But if you look at verse 18 there of our reading tonight, Paul writes, notice of 1 Thessalonians 5, this is a lovely text, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So as Christians tonight, as God's people, we should be a thankful people. 
And even as we look back on 2022, even as we come to pray tonight, let's be a thankful people. The hymn writer said, count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Even if you were to take a sheet of paper tonight and just write down all the blessings that God has bestowed you upon your life, even this year. If I was to do it, we would say like the hymn writer, we can count our blessings and name them one by one. C.H. Spurgeon once said this, and I think it's a great quote. Listen carefully. When joy and prayer are married, their firstborn child is gratitude. Not a beautiful quote. Say it one more time. When joy and prayer, he said, are married, their firstborn child is gratitude. So I want to leave five quick things that even as we look back on this year, as we come to pray, that we can give God thanks for. Five simple things. First of all, if you're taking notes, we can give God thanks tonight for our faith. For our faith. And God has kept us another year. He has sustained us and he has strengthened us. And even to have the health and the strength to be here tonight. Let's give God thanks for the health and strength that we have. And we can give God thanks that he has kept us and he has uh, sustained us another year. We're, we're saved tonight. We're, we're forgiven of our sins. We have peace with God. We have the indwelling of the, of the Holy Spirit. And we all have a testimony. And you can point back to that time in your life when you got saved and the Lord has kept you all of these years. He has kept you another year. And just remember tonight who you are in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Romans 8 and 1, that there's no condemnation. It's not wonderful. To those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I say, I know my sin. You know your sin. You know your past. You know things that you did before you were saved, and so do I. And it's not wonderful tonight to know that our sins are covered by the blood of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our faith tonight is based around him. What a person. We think about his virgin birth, which we've just celebrated at Christmas. We think about his virtuous life. We think about his vicarious death. We think about his victorious resurrection and his soon visual return. And the Savior must be coming very, very soon. But our faith is under attack, isn't it? Like never before. Our faith is constantly mocked by the world and our faith is despised by many even around us. We only have to look at the, the newspapers. We only have to look at our government, the internet. We only have to look at social media, television programs. The majority have no time for the gospel. There's a great falling away and there's a great decline in church attendance, isn't there? And we need to pray much that God again will have mercy upon us. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, just even again to see what Paul says, what it's going to be like in the last days. Look at 2 Timothy 3 there, and the verse number 1. And how accurate is the word of God? 2 Timothy 3, look at verse 1. Paul writes, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy. Verse 3, without natural affection. Truce breakers, what does that mean? It means people that are unforgiving. And we see that in society. False accusers, incontinent, what does that mean? Without self-control. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, traitors. Haiti, what does Haiti mean? It means individuals that are headstrong, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Then look at verse 5. In the last days, Paul writes, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You know anybody like that? These individuals, Paul says, in the last days, they will be religious. They will make a profession, but have no depth. They're living a lie. There's no evidence of the new birth. They want to be religious, but they also... Enjoy their sin. Brothers and sisters, these are days when we need to contend for the faith. And we need to preach the full counsel of God. We need to preach the gospel message in all its simplicity. And in this 21st century, again, we need to know the fundamentals of our faith. We need to know what we believe and what we stand for. 
Listen to Peter, 1 Peter 3, 15. He says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Now here's what Peter says. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We've got to be ready for individuals when they ask us questions. When people ask us questions about creation, we've got to be able to answer it. And evolution, these are topics that people are talking about. We need to be able to answer it as God's people from the word of God. We need to know why the Bible is true. People ask us questions. Have we got the answers? We need to know these things because the world around us are wanting to know the answers. Many people to these questions. And I certainly meet many of these people when you're out in the streets and when you're around doors. People would say to me, how do you know the Bible's true? And it's so important that we have answers. People want to know about the age of the earth, don't they? People want to know about dinosaurs. People want to know even evidence that the Lord Jesus existed. People want facts. People want to debate. And it's so important in these days as God's people that we're sharp in the book, that we're sharp in the word, that we've got the answers for these different individuals. I was reading about a man called Lee Strobel. And he actually went out to disprove Christianity. He was the legal editor of the Chicago Tribune. His wife became a Christian and he was going to divorce her. But he started to study the evidence for the Christian faith and he actually became a Christian based on the evidence. And he wrote books, The Case for Creator, The Case for Christ, The Case for the Resurrection. And they're good little books. Maybe you don't agree with everything he says, but they're good little books if, if you want to know more about the evidence of Christianity, the evidence that we know that the Bible is true, why we need to have a creator. Our faith is real, isn't it, tonight? We can defend the faith. We serve a living God. And even when we see lives changed, it's not wonderful that the Lord is still saving souls in these days. David could say, blessed is he, Psalm 32, 1, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. David had great faith, didn't he? David knew his sin, David knew his past, David knew his failures, but David knew that he was forgiven. He says, blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And in Psalm 32, 11, David also says this, be glad in the Lord. Are you glad in the Lord tonight? I'm glad in the Lord. I'm so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful to be a Christian. And this is what David says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice your righteous and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Brothers and sisters, very much been in my heart today and our brother mentioned it in his opening prayer. Let's pray for those tonight who are being persecuted because of the faith. Let's remember them. We can come so easily tonight. But let's remember to pray for our dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering because of the faith. Hebrews 13, 3, we're reminded, remember them that are in bonds, the Bible says. Who are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. And Open Doors lists the top 10 countries for Christian persecution in 2022. Number 10 was India. Number 9 was Iran. 8 was Pakistan. 7, Nigeria. 6, Eritrea. 5, Yemen. 4, Libya. 3, Somalia. 2, North Korea. The most persecuted country to be a Christian today, according to Open Doors, is Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And they also state that 360 million Christians around the world suffer high-level persecution. Imagine. 360 million. Over Christmas, enjoyed a few days just reading and watching videos on YouTube of different things, different missionaries. And I came across John and Betty Stam. Has anybody ever heard of John and Betty Stam? What wonderful servants of God they were. If you get a chance, read about the life and ministry of John and Betty Stam. Or even if you go on to YouTube, there's some videos there. And they went uh, to, to China uh, to be missionaries in the 1930s. An amazing couple, but they were martyred. They were martyred for the Lord. And it's an amazing that Betty Stam wrote this poem just before she was martyred. And little did she know that she was going to be martyred, but it just the way it happened. But listen to the words she penned, and this really touched my heart. Just before her death, she penned these words, Lord, I give up all my own plans and purposes, 
all my own desires and hopes and accept thy will for my life. Would you say that tonight as you pray? Could I say that tonight? She said this, I give myself, my life and my all, utterly to thee, to be thine forever. She said, fill me, oh, what challenging words. Fill me and seal me with thy Holy Spirit. Use me as thy wilt and send me where thy wilt. And work out the whole will in my life at any cost, now and forever. Not amazing, that's challenging. There was a man and a woman, a married couple, a young married couple, who were willing to go and reach people that had never heard the gospel. And they became martyrs. But their life and their legacy and their testimony lives on and many have been inspired through them and many have went to the mission field. John and Betty Stam. We can give God thanks then for our faith. Secondly, tonight as we pray, we can give God thanks for our families. And I can see some of you smiling saying you don't know the type of family that I have, maybe. Are you glad to see your families at Christmas? You're glad to see some of your families, but Christmas Day is nearly enough, isn't it? You're glad to then to get back to your own, your own wee place again. But we can give God thanks for our families. And God has been good to our families even as we look back on this year. And we must remember that the family unit is God's plan. The family unit is God's way. And sadly, the family unit is under attack isn't it, by the world, by those that have no time for God or for the Bible. The family unit is under attack and we need to pray. We need to pray for our families. And isn't it lovely tonight that the, that the Saviour knows what goes on within families? He lived in a family. He knows all about family life. Matthew 13, 55 tells us that Jesus had four brothers. We're told, is not, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren? We have James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. And then Matthew 13, 56 tells us they did sisters. But they're not named or numbered. So maybe tonight in your family there's trouble. Maybe there's sickness. Maybe there's problems. There's great trials. It's not lovely that we can pray to a saviour who knows all about family life. And as we pray tonight, let's pray that this coming year will be the year when our families are saved. I would say tonight with all unsaved loved ones, maybe for you, you're praying for your son. Keep praying for him. Maybe you're praying for a daughter, maybe a husband, a wife, grandchildren. Keep praying for them and don't be preaching at them all the time. Just live your life in a way before them that they know that my, my dad's a man of God. My mother's a woman of God. Just keep praying for them. And every now and again, when you get that opportunity, maybe invite them along to something or maybe give them a CD or maybe give them a little gospel track. And let's pray that God will work even this year. Do you remember Andrew was the one who reached Simon Peter? John 1, 41, we are told that he first findeth his own brother Simon. I love that little word there that he findeth. Andrew went out of his way to reach his brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, we have found the Messiah which is being interpreted to Christ. And without Andrew, there would be no Simon Peter. Peter was the preacher, and Andrew was the personal worker. Not everybody's a preacher, not everybody's a personal worker, not everybody's a missionary, but isn't it lovely that we have all a different gift, and we can all bring people to the Lord. And let's encourage our children and our grandchildren tonight. Let's encourage them even to go into the work of the Lord. Let's encourage uh, children or grandchildren to be missionaries or pastors or evangelists or Sunday school teachers, let's encourage them to go into the Lord's work. Did the Lord not say, Matthew 9, 38, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. And brothers and sisters, can I say tonight, always guard the family altar. Guard the family altar. Sit down with your children and your grandchildren and read and pray with them. And set them that example in the home. There's a wee family that come to a lot of missions I would do up around County Down. And I think very highly of them. And I know a certain time at night not to ring them. Because they're sitting as a family praying. The husband, the wife, the three children, they're praying. And I know the time that they pray. And I know, don't be ringing them at that time. And sometimes maybe if I've forgotten, the phone doesn't answer. And then... He would ring me back, Noel would ring me back, and he would say, John, where we're having our family altar. Isn't that lovely? 
And I trust that you have that family altar. And if not, maybe you don't have that family altar in your home. Why not from next year onwards say, right, we're going to pray together as a family. We're going to read together as a family at some part of the day and bring our needs to the Lord. Colossians 3.20, we read, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 4, we're told, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And it's wonderful to have a family altar. You're listening wonderful. We can give God thanks as we pray today for our faith and our families. Thirdly, we can give God thanks for our friends, can't we? And having good Christian friends is wonderful. And that's a blessing of the Lord. And maybe even this year God has brought maybe good people into your life. And that's one lovely thing about the job that I have is I travel around different churches and different halls and meet so many Christians in so many places. You meet some wonderful friends. You meet some wonderful Christian people. And I thank God for those in my life who I count as close friends. I know lots of people, but in one sense, a few close friends, people that I can really trust and confide in. And I'm sure you're even the same. You maybe know lots of people, but it's not lovely for those. It's lovely that you have maybe those two or three people that are really good friends that you can trust, that you can tell anything to, that you can ask them maybe to pray about something, and you know it will not go any further. And remember to give God thanks for those individuals. And even uh, the Apostle Paul actually. He, he, he talks about false brethren. And there's people I don't know about you and you get to know them after a wee while and you start to see the cracks. You, you think they're, they're, they're good people and they're sincere people. But when you spend a bit of time in their company, you, you start to see the cracks. You, you have to have a lot of discernment in the Lord's work, don't you? Who, who's genuine and, and, and who's actually false? The Apostle Paul was the same. He talks about false brethren. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, just so we see this. Because often the Christian life can be lonely, but good friendships are important. Fellowships are imp- fellowship with God's people is important. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Paul here writes, or 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23, are they... Ministers of Christ, he says, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, uh, more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Verse 25, thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in pearls of waters, in pearls of robbers, in pearls by mine own countrymen. And pearls by the heathen, and pearls in the city, and pearls in the wilderness, and pearls in the sea. And look at this little phrase, verse 26, he talks about, in pearls among false brethren. Verse 27, in weariness, who said the Christian life was easy? Look at what Paul goes through here. In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, and thirst, and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Verse 28, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. And then in some of Paul's epistles, he talks about Demas, doesn't he? Demas looked the part, but then the love of the world got in. He talks about Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. And for you that study your Bibles tonight, isn't it interesting that the name Demas, it means popular? Isn't that interesting? So perhaps the wrong friends led Demas astray. We've all got to watch a false brethren. People that look the part. And one old preacher said that there's always a Judas among the twelve. Not the truth. I'm sure you've seen it all over the years. I've seen it over the years too. We've got to be on our guard. And let's always pray for discernment. And even anybody in church leadership or wanting anybody to come onto the oversight of the church or the, the board of the church. Oh, we need much wisdom, don't we? Need much prayer. Need to have that discernment who's genuine. There's always a Judas among the twelve. And what I've noticed in my ministry too, that when there's blessing, the devil always tries to get in. I'm sure you've seen that in your ministry too. And especially even time of a gospel mission, I've always seen it's either just before the mission or it's after the mission the old devil always tries to get in. 
when soldiers saved, when backsliders are restored, when God's people are fired up, the old devil tries to get in. And I've seen that happen even this year. Some great missions in different places, and maybe after the mission's over, the old devil's tried to get into the church. Or maybe before the mission, when there's been, or once the mission has happened, there's been, been blessing, but just before the mission, the devil has tried to get in. And he's no doubt that he's cute and he's wiser than Daniel, as the Bible says. But even young people tonight, be careful of your friendships too. And I see a lot of lovely young people coming up to Belfast to study, brought up in good Christian homes, and then they start keeping the wrong company. And then they get drifted and they go out into the world. So young people, be careful of your company. But Paul never forgot those who ministered to him and supported him and loved him. And we read about individuals such as Barnabas. Paul would value Barnabas, wouldn't he? The son of encouragement. Paul would va value Barnabas and John, Mark and Silas and Luke and Priscilla and Aquila. And we can all relate to individuals that encouraged us when we were just new Christians, just new in the faith. I went to see a lady there over Christmas. Lives away down in Island McGee, way out uh, near Carrick Fergus there. And her husband was a great encouragement to me when I was first saved. An old man called Ernie McCune. And every Christmas I always make an effort to go and see Evelyn. And um, it was lovely just having that wee time of fellowship with her and talking about her husband who's in heaven now. But when I became a Christian, Ernie would have me up and he says, I'm going to take you for a cup of tea. <laughs> Or I'm going to take you for something to eat. Or here's a book for you. Or here's a CD for you. And a man that was a wonderful encouragement. And he used to tell me about Duncan Campbell. And Duncan Campbell stayed in his home. And he used to tell me about the Isle of Lewis revival. I was only a young Christian. I hadn't heard about the Isle of Lewis revival. I didn't know anything about Duncan Campbell. But it gave me a hunger to learn. And it was all three individuals like that. And we thank God for them and I'm sure you can relate to people that encouraged you who were good friends over the years and the Bible has much to say about friendships David and Jonathan there's Elisha and Elijah Paul and Timothy Ruth and Naomi but it's not wonderful tonight we have the greatest friend and people can come and go on our lives but Charles Fry penned I found a friend in Jesus he's everything to me He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley and him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow, he's my comfort. And maybe there's individuals here today and recently you've experienced sorrow. Isn't it wonderful? In sorrow, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to rule. He's the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. Jesus Christ is always there. And it's wonderful tonight that he's, he's in the midst. He's here. And he's got that great promise, haven't we, where the two or three are gathered together in my name. He says, I'll be in the midst. And often we can come to meetings and we can say, how many was out the night? How did the meeting go? Ah, oh, there was such and such a number out. But listen, if he's here, and his presence makes the face. That's all that counts. And I want to know more of his presence in my life. I'm sure that's the desire of your heart this evening. Moving on quickly, we can give God thanks for our faith and our families and our friends. Listen, as we pray tonight, we can give God thanks for our finances. God has blessed many of us in 2022, hasn't he? As we look back at this year, I'm sure if some of you were to come up, maybe and give a wee word of testimony how the Lord has blessed you this year I'm sure you could say that God has provided your every financial need maybe you had bills to pay maybe you had things to get for children or grandchildren in your home paying for things here in relation to the church the Lord has been faithful and Paul again tells us Philippians 4 19 but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus it was David that said in Psalm 37 25 I've been young and now I am old Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That wonderful tonight. The Lord has kept us another year. He's provided everything for us. As I told you one other week, I just live by faith. And I can look back to this year and say that the Lord 
has met my every need. I have a roof over my head tonight. A warm bed to go home to. Shoes on my feet. Food in my cupboard. He's a wonderful saviour indeed. Let's keep the balance with money. Sadly, many today, even among God's own people, are driven by money, aren't they? Many want a bigger house, a bigger car, all these things, more holidays. And the Lord just gets the leftovers of our lives. Let's keep the balance. Let's not get into debt too. Many of God's people would ring me and they're in debt financially. But let's always keep the balance with money. Again, Paul tells Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world. It is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Even John the Baptist. Oh, John the Baptist didn't have much of this world's goods, did he? He lived in the wilderness. He ate locusts, wild honey. He wore camel skin clothing. What was Jesus' verdict of John the Baptist? There's none greater born among women. Where would John fit in in the churches today? But all oh, John the Baptist, in the Lord's eyes, there was none greater born among women. Brothers and sisters, can I remind us, those that are involved in the Lord's work, listen, we don't need to beg for money. You never hear me begging for money. We don't need to beg for money. The Lord knows everything that we have need of. And I'm sure over the years you've had workers from every home crusade. What a ministry that is. And in 2017, I went onto their website. Do you know what their income was? £3,237,824. And they never beg for money. And every year they print 1,300 tons of literature and it goes all over the world. And the first person ever took me to the factory was old Ernie McKeown, who I mentioned earlier, that old man that took an interest in me. And I remember him taking me out to the factory as a young Christian and showing me the work. Have you ever been? Hands up who's been to the factory in Canalan? Yeah, maybe half of you. If you ever want an outing someday, get a bus and book it and go up to the factory out in Canalan, and it's a miracle. It's a miracle of God, and there's maybe near 30 workers, and it's just a faith ministry. It's run completely by faith. And I think in 2017, the income was £3,237,824. Wonderful. No wonder Hudson Taylor could say, God's work, done in God's way, never lacks God's supply. Listen, a rich man is someone who carries the presence of God. You get that? A rich man. A rich woman, a rich young person is someone who carries the presence of God. Do you ever spend time with somebody, maybe in your home, and you know that you've been in the presence of God by their company? They're special. You just know that they're in touch with the Lord, that they've been with Jesus. That's a rich man. That's a rich woman. And I trust that when people spend time with me, People spend time with you to be able to say, there's a man that knows the Lord. There's a man that has prayed and has spent time with the Lord today. Oh, that there's a fragrance about that man. There's a fragrance about that woman. They're special. Maybe you don't have much of the world's goods. Maybe you just live in a wee humble house somewhere. Maybe you just drive a wee humble car. Maybe you haven't much money in the bank. But listen, inside them is treasure. Inside them is the Spirit of God. And to know how to pray and to serve the Lord with everything that they have. That's a rich man. And that's a rich woman. So as we finish, we give God thanks as we pray today for our faith and our families and our friends and our finances. And finally, we can give God thanks tonight for our future. In a few days' time, we'll enter a new year. And none of us knows what the future will hold but we can face the future with confidence. And as God's people tonight, we have no reason to fear. Maybe 2023, maybe you'll get married. Maybe you'll start a new job. Maybe you'll go into full-time ministry. Maybe you'll move house. Maybe you'll retire from your job. Maybe sickness will come your way. It might come my way. Maybe sickness will come my way. Death could come my way. It could come your way. But Cory Tam Boom said these lovely words that, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Do you get that? Never be afraid to trust an unknown future.
to a known God. And we love to sing that little chorus, I know who holds the future, and I know he holds my hand. With God, things don't just happen. Everything by him is planned. So as I face tomorrow with its problems, large and small, I'll trust the God of miracles and give to him my all. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're saying, I just haven't served the Lord the way I should have done this year. Even as we pray tonight, why not say, Lord, oh, touch me afresh by your spirit. From tonight, I'm going to go deeper. From tonight, I'm going to give you every part of my life. God is still building his church. God is still on the throne. And he said in Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I'll finish with this. I was reading Alexander White. He's an old Scottish preacher. He's some good little books. And there was an illustration about uh, something that he said one time. But the story goes on to say that he was always known for his uplifting prayers in the pulpit. And he always found, this old Scottish preacher, he always found something to be grateful for. And one Sunday morning, the weather was awful. Probably a bit like today. And one church member said, certainly the preacher won't think of anything for which to thank the Lord on a wretched day like this. And Alexander White began praying, We thank thee, O God, that it is not always like this. <laughs> it's not always like this. And I don't know as we come to pray what sort of year 2022 has been for you. But listen, folks, listen to the text as we finish. Paul reminds us in everything. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. As we begin to pray, let's thank God for our faith, that we're saved, we belong to him. We can thank God for our families. Those that are saved, thank God for saving them. Those that are not saved, let's pray for them. For our friends, those that the Lord has brought into our lives, maybe even this year, that have encouraged us. For our finances, that with money in our pockets tonight, with food on our table, with a car to drive, this beautiful church, and we can give him thanks for our future, that our times are in his hands. And as old George Whitfield said, you're immortal until God says so. You can't die until he says so. And let's burn out for the Lord in this new year and give him everything that we have. I'm just going to pray and then hand back to Jason for the prayer requests. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can look back on this year and say, great is your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you that you've been there for us. Good times and bad times through trials and difficulties, times of bereavement, times of sickness, times of blessing. You're a wonderful saviour. And Lord, as we come to pray tonight, may we have thankful hearts for all that you've done, even in the different ministries here in the church, even when we think of all the children's work and the outreach team and Lord, all that's been done, we give you thanks tonight. And we thank you that you're still saving souls. We thank you you're still building your church. And we pray, Lord, as we begin this new year soon, oh God, in your will, we pray it'll be a wonderful year, a wonderful year of blessing. And your lovely name is glorified. Thank you for those that have gathered out tonight. Lord, bless them in their own souls and we again pray for our loved ones. Oh, that every one of them will be saved. Lord, we've been, so, we've been reminded of so many sudden deaths recently, even car accidents and all sorts of things. And oh God, we thank you. You've spared us another day. You've spared many of our loved ones. Lord, we want to see them saved and ready for heaven and home. So bless our time of prayer too. Bless Jason as he comes to give the announcements. And we ask these things in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, John.